so I've been working with a client now for the last couple of months and it's been fantastic working with him. And one of the things that I wanted to show you tonight was the actual setup that we've got for the green screen work that we've been doing for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the 360 camera just to run through the setup. Just to give you an idea of what the, the requirements are for if you guys are going to be doing this for yourself and yeah, just give you a bit of insight into the work that goes behind some of this stuff. So this is all happening at my own home. Um, so it makes it easier for the client so they can just come. I can set up the green screen and then we can do the work as needed for them. So using the 360 will just demonstrate exactly what's going on. I will start from back to front. So what we've got in the back, as you can see up here now, I like to get all the lighting up off the ground whenever you're working with lighting. If you notice here, we've got the, the stand, the C stand here. When you've got these all over the place, it's surprising how much that takes up space. And th what you're trying to do is, is maximize on the area as much as you can. So the way that we do that is with do 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 is with these gravity very pause. Now there are other options available, but I just find that these are really good for the price and I'm happy spending 66 quid on these considering the value that I get from it. So we've got two here and I will be purchasing a third, but they are about, I'd say about two to three feet apart and they're going right the way across the living room. And what's happening is the green screen is being attached at the, the top points just by the front by one bongo tie here and here. And then these are being in like a concave effect. If you notice here, here, and then there's another one over here. And they're literally just forming like an arc. And the reason for that is, is that underneath here is an L-shaped sofa and I can't move it. I can't get it out of the living room. It's massive. So that's the only reason why it's in that shape. One, to mitigate any wrinkles and to keep it as uniform as much as we can. The material that we are using for this is do, 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 the Westcott. So this is the Westcott X-Drop Pro Wrinkle and it's almost like a fleecy material, not like the cotton that you normally get with the, the cheaper brands. And I had the cheaper brands, don't get me wrong, they work great, but there's a sheen to them. And I wanted something that was basically wrinkle resistant because it's an absolute nightmare trying to sort all that out. And the more efficient you are, the better. So something like this is fantastic. Now I've got two of these and these are eight by eight and these are overlapping. So they're overlapping about, about, I'd say a foot and a half, maybe two feet either side. So it starts there and the other one finishes here. And with the 360 cameras, it's not really gonna say two feet, but you get the idea. But so that's overlapping and that is forming a concave. Now on the top of this, we've got some cinephile and that is basically making sure that the light then doesn't spill any further back than we needed to. So as you can see the line here, it's creating a nice line and we're mitigating as much spill as we can. And the light then that we're using is actually under cabinet lights. Uh, and these are 900 millimeters. And in this, there's three on the top here. And they're connected together and I'm using Velcro ties because they're really, really lightweight and they are literally being powered by a plug. Now the plug, so with this, you only get a plug that is 40 inches, so it's not long enough. So the way that I resolved it is that I cut this off. I bought a terminal pack to connect an extension cord that you can buy in any hardware store and basically I think that was a three meter or five meter extension cord cut off the the end bit attached the two together and now I have 
a long let's um, see if we can see it there we are it's over here and that is being plugged in and again that's being held in by a bongo tie I'll show you those now and that is literally going all the way down and we've got another one here so in that pack there's four three going across the bars and then one here to fill in this bit here because even though this is doing a great job this bit here sticks out a bit and it wasn't getting the, the light in that I need so again we've put one here and with a bit of semi foil we're just literally folding that into an L shape to block it from spilling back here and that is creating a nice even backdrop and it's been working out well once you've done that you need to get the camera and record a about a minute's worth of footage without any objects in place so get rid of the chair get rid of the laptop get rid of the lamp get rid of anything that's in view you want to get a clean plate of the green screen because that will help use as a garbage mat or something similar not a garbage mat but a clean plate for later on um, and it will make keying out that green screen much much cleaner so that's the, like the next step you need to do once you've set this up and once you've done that you then got to think about the image that you are replacing so we have an image that we like and it suits what Dan is doing so in that then we are going to replicate exactly where the lighting is coming from within that image so in the top left we have this RGB tube light and that's the ST25 uh, and again we have the key light over here the rest of it is just for practicals so within the scene you'll see the lamp and you'll see the laptop and it's just to try and simulate a an office setting and that's what we're going for we, we're creating like an office setting which has a nice relaxing background where you can see the beach in the back now that's not a still image i've replaced the windows with stock footage of the beach and everything has been color corrected so that it all matches cohesively which is working out great so all the practicals do is they add an extra element to say okay this is not just a person on a green screen there's some foreground there's a little bit of mid ground where we've got the actor and then just behind the actor you will see another practical so it, re it just tends to blend that image in much much better so before we move on to the the rest of the light then the camera is actually set at f4 i think the iso is 1600 um, and I've got the shutter angle to 90 degrees and that is, that is a faster shutter angle usually you would use a um, 180 degree angle but when it comes to green screen work you want your actor to be as sharp and to be as clean as possible and motion blur and any depth of field on the actor can actually result in a loss of quality in the image which is counterintuitive to the way that you would normally want to shoot you would want to see the depth of field you would want to see motion blur but when it comes to the green screen work having a clean image and that inc includes motion blur so when you do this when there is motion blur you're going to have a hard time keying out the color behind because there's part of it is skin because of the motion blur and then you have the green cast at the back and it, it can be a bit of a nightmare to, to deal with so that's why we have the camera settings that way and then going back then we've got the distance so the distance is important you don't want your actor to be here because what's going to happen is the light that is spilling or is you know exposing the green screen that's going to bounce light bounces and the the closer the actor is the more that green is going to spill on the actor and that's what you don't want because if you've seen on like TikTok and linkedin i'm not linkedin i'm thinking of linkedin but um TikTok and zoom and you
is the background the edges they just look crap i'm just gonna say it, it it's getting better but right now when i see it i think it looks garbage and that's not what you want from a professional setup or at least a clean setup you want it to be as seamless as possible so that you don't look at it and go well that's on a green screen and it's, it's detracting from the core message of what the person is trying to say so distance is important and this is about eight to ten feet from the subject even though it doesn't look it here on the the camera i've got a laser measuring tool and i've measured the back of this seat to here and it's about eight to ten feet my memory's crap it might even be eight and a half might be nine but it's enough distance anything after five feet and you should be okay but um i would definitely test it and do a bit of trial and error with that so once you've got the distance sorted you then need to light up the actor and this is where we have this key light here um, the reason i have gone with a rectangle softbox is mainly down to space constraints because one it provides a nice big wide source so that it provides great wrap and it keeps the image soft it's not too it doesn't have too much you know depth so that means i can get this c stand over the desk bed and i can get the light closer to the actor providing that it doesn't get in the shot of the the camera and keep that relatively as soft as i can um, it does come with a grid but i haven't used it uh, for this one because I, I wanted to provide a bit more softer lighting and a bit more wrap and i wasn't worried about the light bouncing off the back because if anything any extra light will probably just help with filling in down by here anyway so it's, it's serving as a, a bonus in here there's a practical and that is the aperture b7c this is the small light bulb um, light and they're fantastic I, I love those they're really good for controlling practicals i've got two of those and they're working out great now the rest of it then is we've got the actor sitting down and they are reading off the teleprompter and the whole reason why there's a cloth over this is because the teleprompter or this particular teleprompter which is the des view has a slight gap when it touches the lens and where it actually connects so it doesn't connect there it connects underneath i've got it on rail lens if i don't have anything and any light escapes or gets into it it can actually reflect off the screen that's in there and it can cause problems with haze in the screen or making it look like there's a little rainbow like a little arc so be mindful of that if you're using a teleprompter and then it's just the control then and dan's doing all the controlling um, and we've used this setup three times now the first time that dan did it um, he couldn't get on with the teleprompter he soon got into it but the second and third time he was like a pro um, and he that was actually gutted because in secretly inside my head i was going how many times is he gonna is it gonna be four or five times today and he only had a misstep one misstep and i was just like gutted because i lost the bet with myself but ultimately i was super proud because he nailed it and literally within 15 minutes of dan turning up obviously we had a conversation coffee laugh i think here we were talking about keanu reeves the actual shoot then he got it down within 15 20 minutes and that way it was just fantastic and then last but not least is that we've got this big five in one reflector uh negative film which is being held up by a clamp lamp stand uh, <coughs> clamp light stand or lamp stand and all that is doing is that it is just mitigating any white walls so if you can see over here where we did the podcast later this room has cream walls door so any light is going to bounce off that um, and i was just trying to avoid color cast for the main uh, youtube video so that's why we have this five in one reflector with the black side just making sure that we're controlling that light and that we're providing a bit more contrast 
on the client's face because that was naturally where um, the lighting would be dark within the image um, and like I said all we did was just try to replicate everything that is within that image and that's really important so when you're selecting a reference image always take into account does it fit with the theme and have a look at the light then if the light then is coming from the right hand side or the left hand side then you want to make sure that your key light mimics that because you don't want it on opposite sides and then you have a background and it just looks completely mismatched and then what we did in post then is that we matched everything we matched the background to the foreground and all these lights helped because we applied additional effects that allowed the light to wrap around so the light from the actual image was able to wrap around on the shoulder we added a touch of film grain on top of both images so that it kept it cohesive and it looked really really nice it did i'm, re I'm really really happy with the, the final product and that is it and the microphones obviously the reason why there's two microphones is that one um just in case it's for redundancies just in case one microphone doesn't work properly uh, which is extremely rare we've got a lavalier on dan as well which is the time code but the only reason why we did two as well is that it was a great way then to split them apart and then record separate audio but what we're going to do for the next one is that I've ordered um, boom arms that will actually fit on the table itself and it'll be more of a podcast style so we can get the actual microphones closer to the mouths. But for this instance, how we did this, that is where I set it up and the actual recorder is on the pole, but um, I've ordered longer XLR cables and they are now sitting all the way over here. And that is pretty much it. That is like the behind the scenes of how we are shooting this particular setup. So the key factors that you want to uh, remember is that get it nice and flat. Get the any wrinkles out. Make sure that the lighting is even. You want to make sure that you have enough distance between the actual green screen and the actor you want to light the actor separately according to the reference image that you have created and then um, it's just a case of then making sure that uh, you've got everything else working like the teleprompter and the audio but those are the basic components so whilst this setup you might be thinking well I, all i got is a phone well the principle is exactly the same it's just the green screen and a camera. You light it, you make sure the distance is right and you shoot. And then you edit out the, the actual green screen. So you can do this with a phone. You can do this with a cheaper light. You can do this with a cheaper green screen. The principles are exactly the same. All we're doing is demonstrating what would happen if you scaled this up a bit. And then the, the, the production sets and studios which completely everything is green and you can walk around and i'm not there yet but that would be something really good to to work towards and that is it so if you found it uh, valuable uh, like a, a behind the scenes and a bit of insight on how we achieved dan's videos then um, i hope it helped um, and until the next time give me a thumbs up uh, put a comment and i will see you in the next one cheers